Hey, how you doing guys? Trucker G here again with another video for Driver Solutions. Um, if you've got any comments or questions for me, please hit me up on my personal YouTube channel, Trucker G. You can also hit me up on my Facebook page, also Trucker G. I monitor those on a daily basis, so it's a whole lot easier to get hold of me on there. I don't always catch the comments on here, I apologize, but it is what it is, right? Uh, so hit me up on one of those two guys. Um, I had a comment from a guy on YouTube and he, he his name was Domingo Fernandez. And I hope I didn't butcher that name. If I did, I apologize, bud. Well, he wanted to want to know a little bit about the autonomous trucks. He kept, he's been asking about the autonomous trucks and I'm going to do, do my best to give you a video on it. I mean, it is what it is. I know how they work. I don't keep up with the latest and the greatest news on it. Why? Because I really don't care. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I mean, I don't see it being an issue, guys. I really don't. I mean, let's kind of talk about that. The way the tr trucks work. Okay. Truck works by running, by, by uh, following the lines on the pavement. Okay. Well, we all know that those lines aren't, aren't always there. Winter comes, it's going to be covered with snow. So how's it going to follow those lines? Well, you might say, well, they'll just make it to where it's GPS. Well, we all know GPS don't work half the time. So what are you going to do? Have an 80,000 pound truck driving down the road and all of a sudden lose GPS without a driver? Don't make no sense. It just doesn't. Um, also seen an interview with a guy from Silicon Valley and he, he was basically telling us how the trucks were 10% or only 10% away from being done. And his answer to the, to the whole fact about using GPS or using the lines were, well, or were, well, maybe what they'll do is they'll have, you know, self-driving trucks follow a, one truck that's actually driven by a driver. Well, that's all good and great, but I don't see that happening either, guys. I mean, it's just the logistics of it. I've been doing this for 28 years, and the logistics hadn't got any better. And what I mean by logistics, I mean, just think, how long does it take you to get loaded at a shipper and receiver? Sometimes it could take two, three hours, sometimes eight hours. Heck, if you're out in California running produce, you know, you might be there for a couple days. So what are you going to have all these autonomous trucks out there with nowhere to park waiting on this load? I, it just, I don't see it happening. You, they would have to get every single company out there, every shipper and receiver to be on the ball and have everything rolling like clockwork. And they can't do that now. So I just don't see it happening. And as far as the trucks being, you know, 10% from being complete, well, that's a huge 10%, guys. I mean, uh, I could make a, t a time machine out of De DeLorean, like back on, like back to the future, the movie, you know, uh, well, just buying the, buying the DeLorean itself is the time machine's 90% done, but it ain't no good without a flex capacitor. So it, it just don't make no sense. I don't see them making all this, all this happen in 28 years. They, they barely made it, made it any better as far as the shippers and receivers go. I mean, how are they going to tackle that problem? I mean, that's just a couple problems. I mean, there's just so many factors. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to put a, a service attendant on every single pump out, out on the diesel aisle and you're going to tell us flying J and TA and all these other mom and pop stores that they've got to fill, fill these trucks up, have an attendant on each pump. Well, if they only, only hire one, I mean, look how long it takes to get through a fuel island now. Just imagine if all these autonomous trucks are at the at the fuel stop trying to get fuel and you only have one attendant. You'd have to have an attendant for each each pump. Well, there goes fuel prices. Fuel prices go high, so what exactly are you saving? I mean, as far as the shippers and receivers go, where are these trucks gonna where are they gonna go? You know? That trucks they're gonna put put in the computer basically travel this load to go from point A to point B. Well, what if they get to point B and there's nowhere to park the truck? There's no, you know, they don't have a door for the truck. Where's that truck going to go? As drivers, we know, hey, hit the nearest truck stop. Well, how are they supposed to relay that, relay that to the computer? I mean, I'm sure there might be a, there might be a solution for it, but there's so many problems 
and so many factors that they haven't even considered. I mean, we got you got basically pencil pushers or number crunchers, you know, on on the keyboards telling a truck how to drive through a computer. I mean, yeah, they might get the advice fr from a truck driver, but anybody that's got any experience knows that not every situation is going to be the same. So how how are they going to put that in the computer? I don't know. I just don't see it being a factor. I really don't. I mean, we can sit here and debate this all day long. We can sit there and debate this for the next 20 years because I really don't think we're going to see it any, any sooner than 20 years. And I really don't think we're going to see it in 20 years. That's just my opinion. It is what it is. So you're going to live your life worrying about autonomous trucks or and basically not get into the industry or thinking about getting out of the industry because somebody said there's going to be autonomous trucks that's on you that's up to you you know i can't make your mind up for you i can tell you that i'm still running my business and i ain't got to worry in the world about it all right guys i'm i'm just gonna make this short i mean we could talk about this for the next 10 years and it is what it is right all right guys you guys be safe out there